Okay, so this is the third attempt to strain. It's the 13th of July 2023. We're uh, at the low tide. It's somewhere in the next few minutes. I'm going to make my turn now and head back out. I had to make more adjustments to the camera. I'm trying, I'm trying to get footage of the coastline without beating the prop off the boat or anything. Or hitting anything. So we're showing the tidal zones. the tidal zones at almost low tide, the tide's still falling for another 10 minutes and we're doing the coastline out to the point we're going to speed up and go to that little colony and see if we can get it all in one video we're having a problem with shooting long videos and we'll figure it out over the next couple of days I'm sure the idea this morning was to try to shoot like a two hour video, but the video stopped itself at a couple, of, I think it was like 35 minutes or something. But we'll, we'll figure this out over the next uh, few days and get consistent. And so uh, I'm, I got rocks on the outside and there rocks on the inside of me. And so I got a Next few minutes, just kind of like making sure I don't get into trouble here. Once we get through this little spot, I'll be, uh, I have more freedom to pay attention to the camera. Because we got, we got rocks, air croppings right there alongside of us. And then we got rocks on this side. And as you can see with the camera, I'm in the yellow. I should be left to that. <laughs> and GPS it doesn't get every single rock. Yeah. So we're looking for any kind of activity on the shorelines in the tidal zones. We're looking for mussels in particular, any kind of snails on the rocks. We're looking for algaes. So far all we've seen was uh, kelp weed which is the most popular weed in all oceans on the planet. And it's a very sickly, the stuff that we are seeing. We're seeing stains on the rocks where life used to live. This is due to the endless perpetual disease factories known as nuclear power emissions into the environment for 80 years. And a big pulse event in 2011 known as Fukushima where inconceivable uh, Quantities. We're talking about 10 million pounds of building, two fuel pools and a reactors, pure uranium plutonium that melted down in Japan. The winds carried it here, got here in about 12 days or until. We've done six years of research from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska and the Pacific Ocean for four to five months a year. And we've been on the Atlantic for three years. And this year it's dismal, the, the migratory species have not showed up. The migratory species haven't showed up. And so uh, Cape and Will Beach on sandy beaches, and this is one of the perfect examples. We're at low tide, there's a few seagulls just took off and they're, they're waiting, hoping. But so normally they'll follow the capelin to the beach. They'll be able to see the capelin uh, from above. Looking a little shady right here. Looking real. The sonar is saying I'm okay. Still got 10 feet or something underneath me. It's getting deeper there now. 
So we're gonna go around the point here and head to the colony before the camera shuts the video off because it only lets me do like a 30 or 40 minute video. Right now we're only five minutes in so we're good. But it's all it's all rocks here. There's no uh, birds nesting on the cliffs, there's no birds nesting no birds feeding on the shoreline at low, low tide. We're almost officially low tide. I got like shallow on both sides of me that time. Don't like that feeling at all. We got a seagull in right there. I'm gonna go out here and go around the point. I see some cormorants, I think, on the rock right ahead of me. And zoom in on them when we get to them. Okay, so. Low tide was uh, six, six, 14 minutes ago. So it's officially low tide. We're out on the continental shelf in the middle of the Atlantic, about 12 miles from the most easterly point of the continent. And the biggest migratory seabird run and colonies on the entire planet. And there's been no runs and there's no colonies. They should be here raising fledglings. We've never seen a single bird feeding from the ocean in 15 trips. And a lot of these trips are seven hour trips. And to our horror, the universities and academics are not doing this. We're forced to go do it. What a strange world. There's going to be payback to the nuclear industry. I can guarantee you uh, the world is going to wake up. It's going to be too late. They're going to wake up. And that's the end of nuclear. And nuclear will never get another moment's rest for a thousand years. Once the world realizes what's really going on. And the cover story, like out of South Korea, about Fukushima, is only 2.2 grams ever got into the reactors. I don't know what kind of idiot cooked up that story, most likely the IAEA. My goodness, have they ever turned their backs on us? Another up. I've got another one right in front of me. I'm going to take the coward route because it's a bit of a swell, and if I hit a rock, that can do a lot of extra damage when you're being lifted up and dropped down. So we've got a rock right alongside of his deer. We'll take the safe course and just. Uh, I can zoom in on the beach from here. It's much safer than trying to go in there. I don't mind going in there when there's no ground swells. It's not a big one, but it's it's very sneaky. Every fifth or tenth one, you just a nice little roller. My boat is a flat bottom boat, so I'm not really worried about getting on a rock because the boat doesn't tip, right? And that's why I picked this particular boat. This is designed to go up on the rocks, and the next wave will take you off the rocks. And I've been up on the rocks <laughs> in hurricanes in 3 o'clock in the morning and this boat picked me up 
and put me back in the water. Yeah, it was six or seven thousand bucks worth of damage, but picked me up and put me back in the water. I rebuilt the leg on this uh, a couple of years ago. And I put the guts of a 150 into it because I'm underpowered. I got a 115. I should have at least a 200. I should have two 150s on the back of it. That's what this is designed for, 300 horsepower. And I would like to put twin 70 Yamahas in the back of it because they just sip fuel, right? And, and you have a, you have a backup to get you out of an emergency jam. And so we got Camarons. Soon we'll see the fledglings with these guys. I thought I seen one this morning. I thought I seen one this morning, but I didn't. Now they don't belong here. They're not indigenous to the province. Ah, uh, sorry guys. Only one stayed there, he was diving by the looks of it. He's got his wings up. Where are you too, buddy? Usually they do that because they're diving, right? And that's how they dry off. And unlike gulls, gulls can't dive, right? And we'll see the pictures tonight of... Uh... Sorry, I'm zoomed right in so it's a little tricky. And a boat that's moving. I just want to get a clear video of him. He doesn't like me. I don't blame him. Let's zoom back out. And because I'm starting to get off course here. Because when you got a little breeze pushing you on the rocks, you got to pay extra attention, right? But I hope this comes out really good. We'll see. We'll learn. We'll adjust. It'll adapt, unlike the species. So there's a bunch of little beaches in there we'll be keeping an eye on this summer to see if any... Uh... I'm going to have to bring my little Zodiac with me, drop the anchor and take the little Zodiac and go into all these little tiny spots at some point. Now we haven't heard the motor beep a single time all morning. And I went up to half speed on a couple of occasions there, never had no issues. I got two full fuel filters coming. I, I, I drained the Raycor. The Raycor did have a bit of water into it originally. I'm not seeing any lately. I got... I should have a filter showing up today or Friday. I know they called me and said there was a package dropped off the door this morning when I was out here. Hopefully that's the fuel filter. Those things are stupid expensive. For the outboard itself, right? They're a special filter. Now I've been pouring in octane into all my gas. Just to flush the system out. Because it didn't get used last year. And this year it's getting a ton of use. <laughs> yeah, it was screaming the first seven or eight times it would beep every... 60 seconds drive you nuts and restrict your power. But over the last number of trips that happened less and less and now that today everything's working the way it's supposed to. And I'm using the same tank over and over. I don't know. I, I changed tanks to the front tank. It worked better. I was thinking it might have been a vacuum leak or something but there's no gas leaking. Okay, another crazy point. Let's go, we're gonna pick up a bit of speed and go around to the other side. I looked at this this morning. It's just, I'm still in the yellow on my GPS charts. That's, that's what's considered very cautious. And once you get into deeper water, we'll see. We want to shoot around, get to the bird colony before the video. 
video has a limit of uh, running in 15 minutes. I think we can get 40 minute video. I, I didn't realize it, but how many minutes it was streaming. I know at one point they had looked at it, it was 30 seconds. About 31 feet. We'll catch this part tomorrow. We're gonna, let's, let's pick up speed and shoot over to the seabird colony on the other side and get that footage. I got a cup of tea there. I want to put it somewhere so I can pick up speed and not worry about it.
Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to go right around this island. And then I also got pictures today of this, of the nesting colonies. There's about, I'm assuming there's a thousand seagulls on the island, 250 cormorants and 200 plus ticklas. And that's it. There's no puffins, there's no migratory species. And we're just going to go in here, nose our way in. And I'm going to zoom around. I can see one fledgling right up front and center when I make my turn up here, which is in about 10 seconds. And that'll get us in the prime spot to get. Uh, there's a couple of cormorants out here. And the cormorants are mostly all on this side of the island. The hatchlings are basically all on this side of the island. I only see one fledgling on the other side. Hang on here. Should be a fledgling right on top of that rock. There he is in the center. Oh shit, eh? I hit a rock. I bet you I hit a fucking rock that time. With the crop. Faster. I'm on a rock with the leg. With the leg. Nice, Dana. Off to a good start. This is where I did want to be with the wind on my stern. And I'm to rock off my stern. I'm going to glue the leg up as high as I can. I'm going to back off very quick, kind of check the prop. I'll come back in in a second. If I hit a rock, I hit a rock. Nothing can do about it. No big deal, we'll just check that very quick and I'll come back in here. I see two fledglings and we've seen them before, right? They're, they're the same, they survived so far. Let me just go out here for one minute, we'll check the prop very quick. I'm just going to bring the, the motor up, run back and have a quick pull the prop. That'll suck if I hit my prop. <laughs> it should be okay right here. Let's go back and have a look. It's good. We must have hit the leg, right? I'll check the leg once it gets to the boat under the water. It looks like the prop's good. Let's do it again before it just back in there. It wasn't like a hard hit, but these props, they're designed, they're designed to give in so you don't hurt your leg, right? Just give me one second. Hang on here. Gotta lock the door down, because otherwise, Door. I got a new seat I'm sitting on today. Oh, should drop the motor first, Dana. Hang on, we're almost there. Dropping the motor is probably a good idea.
Yeah? Watch that olive bit, I wonder. 